I'm on the floor at this point and it's my phone is vibrating and <sighs> I wake up and I'm just like ah! I don't know how long I've been on the floor but then I call 911 and they came in they checked me when I said they want, I didn't want to be a doctor my mother was like hey just be a doctor for me and my dad was like I don't mind but when I moved at the time I didn't even know I didn't know where I was going to stay like I didn't have an apartment I did oh, not wow. have I didn't have an apartment I didn't have a job so but but <laughs> <laughs> this is young and abroad oh, Hello and welcome to another episode of Young and Abroad, where we dive into the unique experiences of young immigrants navigating a new life in a foreign country. So today we have a very interesting topic, one that I feel needs to be talked about a lot more. Um, it takes a lot to just wake up one day and pack a bag or two and be like, okay, I'm leaving my country. I'm leaving, you know, the home that I've known all my life and just starting a new life in a brand new country where I have nothing to really start with, but the prayers of my parents. <laughs> so I know for a lot of people, it's not that bad. Like sometimes there's support, but for quite a few of us, it was just like us and and god <laughs> um so yeah we're just gonna go into the i guess the ebbs and flows the struggles that come with that process of just starting over um it's not an easy decision for anyone that has made that decision big ups to you honestly today we're going to be discussing the effects of starting over on you know a person's mental health and the struggles that come with it um i believe this is something that we need to talk about a lot more and yeah so in this episode i have one of my instagram faves <laughs> we have with us ediri obor did i pronounce your surname correctly uh you said obor actually obo obor okay should i take sometimes, that <laughs> sometimes, sometimes i have to okay. i will practice how to say it because i don't know it's like obo obor okay. so, like, uh, so obor. whatever version you give me is fine no, no, I'll say correctly. We have with us today, <laughs> Enduri Obor. Yay! Okay. Let's get this. Yes, yes, <laughs> Thank you so much for coming on. I'm so excited to Thank have you. Thank you for having me. Of course. I'm excited to be here. <laughs> okay, so just a bit of a background. Enduri is going to introduce herself, or I just have a bit of a spiel on, you know, who she is. Enduri is a filmmaker mm -hmm. that is skilled in the art of visual storytelling. Um, she's also an advocate for mental health. Um, I say this because her content is around wellness. I really love your wellness content. Oh, you. Honestly, we met on Instagram. Yes. That was how I started following her. So she has a lot of content around that. When I was thinking of this topic, I was like, yes, Idiri is the perfect person <laughs> to bring on to, you know, talk about this. So mm -hmm. yeah, I'm very excited for you to, you know, give us some wisdom. Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> I'm excited as well. I am. Um, and thank you for the introduction. I really liked it. Thank you. <laughs> thank you for thank you. <laughs> okay, so let's get started. Could you just give us, you know, a bit of a background about yourself? And if you could also just, you know, plug in what led you to relocating to Canada and just starting a new life here? Of course, I'd love to do that. Uh, background on the theory. Who, who, who? about to introduce me. I was like, I wonder how you would introduce me because when I think of myself, I'm just like, how do I even describe myself? Actually, these days, I think the way I describe myself is a multi hyphenate creative because mm -hmm. I I do different things. Um, I make films. Yes, um, I'm a new filmmaker. <laughs> um, but I also host. I do some radio show. I'm a host oh, wow. of the radio show. Love um, it. I, I do photography. It. I make videos, not just on my like, Instagram page or whatever, but I actually make videos like as a business owner. Um, and then I am a lifestyle and wellness content creator. Um, and it's something that I'm very passionate about. Um, I, I like to think I about it tell. as <laughs> my thing, you know, slightly starting with my own experience. Um, and then I don't know, from my own experience, I'm just like, you know what, this is, this is probably one of the most important things to take care of, like to pay attention to, because mm -hmm. if you don't start with like 
where your mind is at, how you're doing, how you're feeling. It's it affects everything else. You can't show 100%. in life like as your best if you're not like well on the inside. So that's kind of how I got into my you know, wellness space. Um, and kind of how I got to Canada. So I've been here for about 12 years, probably going on 13. She's an OG. Which is quite <laughs> wild. <laughs> um, and how did I even end up here? Um, I came here for uni. So I, I came to Canada right after secondary school. I didn't do any of those like college experiences or anything. I came, I went straight into university. Love it. And for the most part, I have to credit my dad and my mom. Um, so my, my dad did his flight school here like many many years ago oh, wow um yeah and initially my siblings like my older siblings kind of went to like the uk for school and after a while i think my dad was like yeah maybe not the uk so kind of became i guess the mm-hmm. next option for him and thanks to my dad <laughs> um, it. it's canada for school and i've been here ever since thank you so much for that intro um and yeah it's honestly giving business mogul it is yes (laughs) i love it um and i just remembered like it was an event that i saw you working and you were really focused and giving us the energy yes (laughs) so yeah we're done thank you i I love i love to see black women killing it yes in whatever they're doing well, can we just go a bit into your career? Because when we were discussing mm-hmm. earlier, um, you did mention that you have an engineering background. Yeah. Which I found very well, interesting. I have, I have part engineering background. Oh, part, not, okay. Not okay, fair enough. Yeah. Okay. okay, so can you just tell us a bit about that and mm-hmm. what led to your transition into film? Because Ooh. that is such a bold step mm-hmm, to, to mm-hmm. take in a foreign <laughs> land. <laughs> Like, I'm just thinking about the journey or like just how long it has taken. Um, so where do we begin? <laughs> I, I, mean, I think I'll anywhere. Just, I like to start this, can this start from the middle from the anywhere. Okay, I like to start yeah. this thing with okay, so I I was always a science student. I'm a good one, you know. And okay, love it. yeah, so I have to like myself. <laughs> it's really good, you know. Um and I guess coming out of secondary school, mm-hmm. initially I wanted to be a doctor. And then I was like, okay, I want to be a, I don't know, I think I have to think, I'm assuming it's um, Ben Carson that had me thinking, I want to be a neurosurgeon. Yeah. Oh my God. So I'm like, hey, I want to be a doctor. And then next time I'm like, I want to be a neurosurgeon. I have a doctor friend that literally um, went to medical school because Because of of Ben Carson. Yeah, because of the the book. Um, So that was, I guess that's the genesis. I Mm. wanted to do that. Um, But then besides being a science student, like, I, the way I guess I am as an adult where I guess I'm doing different things, I, I've always been that kind of person since I was a child. Hmm. Um, so as in I in the, so I'm a science student, yes, but um, in secondary school, I was in cultural dance. I was okay. in the drama club. I was in the choir. I was singing. Oh, wow. Um, nice. I would go out of school for debates. Whatever it is, I was just, I used to do different things. More in the social. Yeah. Um, and I think like senior school, mm-hmm. I kind of just realized how much I just really loved my English class. And I loved it because mm. I liked writing. Like, I just enjoyed the process. Shout out to my <laughs> secondary school English teacher. He's my favorite. Um, oh. And yeah, I, I, I think I developed a good relationship with him. And he would always encourage me like, yeah, you know, you're good. Whatever, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, oh, yeah, wonderful. So there's that. So I'm doing all of these things. And I think feedback from like people that I guess know me and people around me, they, they just used to tend to call out my very dramatic nature or dramatic self or whatever I can't like, you just got you, you should be an actress <laughs> I'm just like uh, okay no problem <laughs> besides the feedback I think me myself of course seeing how much I kind of enjoyed writing mm-hmm. and then watching I think this introspective sense I'm watching TV and I'm just thinking you know what I'd like to this would be nice I can see myself <laughs> doing that you know mm-hmm. I remember the very first time no, you go go out for excursions in school. Mm-hmm. We went to, uh, I think it was AIT. Okay. We went to their studio. Um, in, yes, okay. It was somewhere in Ota, I think. I can't remember. But we went and I remember we did this radio drama thing. But it kind of took us around. We all recorded. I remember just, now that I'm sitting here, honestly, I can remember being in the booth. Oh, wow. That's so cool. They, I think they gave everybody like a line, something we had to say or something like that. I, I can see myself in the radio booth and just hearing hearing other people do it, hearing myself, and I'm just like, oh my God, I sound good. 
love and I'm just, I love Nigeria radio too. So mm. like I'm like oh, I sound like those people on radio. <laughs> like this is so nice. So things like that just kind of fed into like mm. my ideas and thoughts of what it is I want. I could see myself doing so i'm leaving secondary school i want to be a doctor still i actually had applied to canada i i was supposed to go to Carleton university for bio something something i don't know school was supposed to start september while i was waiting for my study permit to come out it didn't come out on time oh, no. so i missed the fall start um, yeah, so I know it really does. I was like this to come out lord it ended up coming out in november um, but in that time, okay. my dad was just like, okay, uh, what schools can I do a January mm. start instead? I think another thing is I really wanted to um, do something I was passionate about. Like that was, mm. I guess, one of those messages they used to preach back in the day, you know, like you have to do something you're passionate about. And I also wanted, like, I just, it was something I valued. So mm. I was like, oh, am I passionate about this doctor thing? Am I passionate yeah. about brains? <laughs> I, remember, literally, I, remember, I legit remember reading my biology textbook. I went to the brain chapter mm. and I was just like, yeah, I'm sorry. I don't care so I'm much. Over so <laughs> no. In that time, anyway, I mm. I realized, yeah, I don't want to do this medicine. So I summed up the courage and I went to tell my dad. And oh. I was like, I wasn't even really sure what reaction I was going to get. I just said, <laughs> Daddy, I don't want to do medicine. Mm. And he was so calm. He was just like, oh, no problem. Oh, like, wow. you have time before, you know, school starts and we, we have to find a January start anyway. You have time to figure out what you want to do like do the different switch. um subjects you want to like apply for i was mm -hmm. like okay no problem that was wonderful so i was like i went to go and start doing research what i want to do mm -hmm. when i was looking i initially looked into the arts like okay is this something i'd want to do because i already knew that i have an interest in this thing mm -hmm. yeah. but i'm like i'm a science student i've been a science student i don't have like the courses or classes to apply for like mm. a art course whatever mm. so i was like i love chemistry i loved math and mm. i loved english and in my own head <laughs> that's together <laughs> equals <Men's> work chemical <laughs> engineering <laughs> so yeah. i went to so, so we applied to auto you for chemical engineering mm -hmm. fun fact while i was still there in my oh this is what i could do i remember looking at um toronto the toronto film school like when I was still mm. in Nigeria, I remember okay. just like browsing their website and I was, in my head, I was trying to think, maybe I can go to U of T. But then, of course, U of T school fees is so much higher. Mm. I had a aunt in Ottawa. It just made sense to go to Ottawa U. So I ended up going to Ottawa U. Um, but yeah, I'm in Ottawa U. I'm doing chemical engineering. First two years is going, it's popping, it's great. It was one of the first few things that happened. Church. I made friends mm. with um, somebody in, she was in the engineering department as well. She was doing electrical engineering, I believe. Um, and she was a part of the media department in her church, which was a redeemed church. Mm. And the way they used to read the announcement, it was like a film, like a newscaster type setup. And I know so what you're talking about. Yeah. I joined her. Oh, I joined the church first. Mm -hmm. And then I was like, oh my God, I love what you're <laughs> doing. So mm -hmm. I joined her and then we started doing the announcement together. Oh, nice. Like, you know, co-hosts, I mean, I guess, yeah, co co anchors yes. of the thingy. And, um, from there and then maybe when she stopped i said it, i took it on and i continued doing it and i would get so much feedback oh my god you're so good at this thing oh, I love you're it. so good at this thing i was like oh, okay thank you thank you thank you so much <laughs> um and then so i'm doing that in mm -hmm. church and, and then still I, I, doing engineering i'm still doing engineering and then i had I, I somehow made friends with some people who were making short films in ottawa um and so we started doing short films and then i was i was acting yeah. but the thing is the more i did it the more i just was like I don't care about this engineering thing. Like I, I remember just sitting in class and um, what they're they talking about. I remember, what I, I think it was, I remember very well. It's like probably a heat, heat transfer class, and the guy is just talking, and I'm just like, I don't care about this thing that you're describing one bit. It. And in my head, I was just like, um, if I go do this, or if I do this engineering thing, like it's a bit, it's a bit struggle because I have to force myself to mm. get into the material. So. I did very serious research. I said, I don't even know how I got the idea. I, think I was listening to so many things at the time that really mm. were just like, go for what you want, blah, blah, Love blah. <laughs> so I started doing like research. In my head, I was like, I'm young enough to try to figure this thing out. Um, if I'm going to make any mm. drastic whatever it is, yep. I have, this, now is the time because yeah. if it doesn't work out, I can pivot. I can, you know, figure it out. So I did research. I looked 
all looked at all the programs mm. in the arts, whatever it is. I saw something that I saw this communications program that had some video production. Mm. So I went to all these advisors, whatever. I'm like, okay, I've been I'm an international student. So if I like paying international fees, Please. Mm. I'm like, would I be able to switch over to this course? Mm. Instead of starting over. Instead of again. starting over. Mm. Like would I be able to switch over and not do and like and still graduate when I was supposed to graduate, mm. like when I was doing the engineering course. Very important. And she was like, time. no, for real. And she was like, yeah, of the definitely that like, they can transfer a good chunk of my engineering courses, some of the electives I'd done as well, mm-hmm. as electives under this new communications program. And I would only need to take like I just need to catch up on some of the main ones mm-hmm. and then okay. maybe take a couple, like two or three electives here and there. And I was like, love it. The math, <laughs> like the math checks out. Mm-hmm. My dad yeah. does not have to pay extra fees in school. Oh, that's so sweet. I was like, <laughs> isn't it just sweet? You like, ah, because I'm, my parents going to meet my father and say, I need to change. Fair enough. I, I, I need to make sure that I'm coming solid, you know? Yeah. So I was like, okay, this is going to work. It's not going to take me extra time. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm still going to graduate when I need to, blah, mm-hmm. blah, blah. I check the fees. I'm like, that's probably slightly cheaper than engineering fees. Oh, okay. Because okay. yeah, you know, engineering, I think engineering programs definitely cost Fair way enough. more than just the communications Fair program. Enough. So I should check, did all my research. When I said I didn't want to be a doctor, my mother was like, hey, just be a doctor for me. And my oh, dad was like, I don't mind that. She's not the one that's going to read the, program, read the course. So oh, wow. I, 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 had, I had the feeling that my mom was going to be the one stressed about it. But mm. I, okay, they're, they're paying international fees and yeah. switching from chemical engineering. So I was just like, see, man, you just have to try. You've done your math, so let's go on. Mm-hmm. So I, I think it was my dad I called. Actually, I, was, I just called both of them. My mom had traveled that, that weekend, so she was not available. Okay. Who are you closer to? Just for context. I'm a mommy's girl. Okay. Like, I Fair think enough. I'm... Yeah, I'm definitely mommy's girl. <laughs> and I remember the first year of uni, and it's nothing. Well, my head is aching me. What do you think? And then she used to work in, like, in a hospital-type space. Okay. So I used to be like, oh, my head is aching me. This one's paying me. What do you think? So, yeah. I'm probably a little Fair closer enough. to my mom. Um, okay. But, yeah, I went... Sorry, I called. Tried to call. I yeah. called my dad. Um, I, I think it was Skype that time. So I was just like, "Yes, so <laughs> I want to switch my course." Mm-hmm. And I just gave him everything. I won't have to do this. Can you kind of And of course, he was like a little like surprised. Ah, I want to change, okay? Yeah. And but I guess because I done my my assignment before i came to meet him he was just like okay you know what you're talking about he was like you've talked about this very well i said yes i said well at some point you're going to become an adult and nobody else is going to be responsible for you as long as you've thought about this very well and you are aware of that and you still want to go ahead no problem. <laughs> I thought that is such <laughs> like, oh, advice. Okay. Yeah, no, then, no. Like that is huge. Like for I guess the non Africans listening to this, like for for that to come from an African parent, that yeah. is Imagine, that is huge. <laughs> every time I think about it, I'm just like, I don't know if I would have successfully switched if my dad was not on board mm. at all. I don't I really don't think so. Um but shout out to you, man. That he yeah, and honestly, so it was for you, like that was such a brave and bold move because <laughs> Most people just like, ah, oh, well, I've already started this thing. Let me just, let me continue. And hmm. when I graduate, I'll figure it out. I don't but know. I felt like I was choking. I'm not going to lie. I really felt like I was choking. Of course, I was doing good in like my engineering class. But I was just like, man, I need to. It was a thing of, you just try. You just, you just have to try. If you don't try, I felt like I would always regret it if I did not hmm. try. So I was just like, yeah. I just had to. And I get thankfully, that. my dad was like, yeah, no problem. My mother, though, followed up with pencil calls. Hey, what's going on? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, see, what I want to do. You know, long story short, that's what I did. I graduated. Uh, the focus immediately was on to get my PR. Um, you know, I can stay. And I moved to Toronto right after university. Oh, okay. Um, because... Otherwise, too quiet. Um, yeah, so we're gonna get it here. You know, there's still so many reasons yeah. why I moved here, but for the most part, I was like, this is the film, this is like the entertainment hub. This is I where mean, I'm gonna meet a lot of people. Yes. I want to do this, so I moved mm. to Toronto. Um, but yeah, moved to Toronto. I didn't have a job when I moved to Toronto, by the way. In my mind, I was like, again, I think there's just this thread of confidence and just faith <laughs> that, you know, God has my back. I love so, it. Like, this in this world. I know I'm going to get a job. I don't mm. think I, I can't wait in I can't stay in Ottawa mm. until I get a job. I have to go. I feel like the job 
you know one of those things where you jump you will land like you, you know you fly whatever it is like you shall you will land you somewhere, somewhere. <laughs> so i wanted to one of those big jobs but i was like oh, in the meantime let me do my little job big job in film big or? job in just like marketing something oh, okay. marketing, proper okay. um because then i'd not even got into this film space i didn't have the confidence to be okay, honest i was still in here oh my god oh my what do i do <laughs> mm-hmm. so um let's see what was like oh yeah turn on something was just telling me to go to the interview at this particular store it was a high-end store and my man i'm like oh this high, all these high-end stores they are very snobbish and okay. they're not nice and whatever <laughs> but so i was just like just go just go mm-hmm. i ended up going four to like six months thereabout into it i became the head cashier and okay at the well, time i don't know about because i've not been doing <laughs> any immigration since recently but mm-hmm. at the time that was good enough for me to get my pr because yeah, okay. i was a manager um so that's how i got my pr not as any, not as not as any big job, <laughs> um, mm-hmm. but yeah, d- done that. Tried mm-hmm. to get into marketing. I did a bit of marketing here and there, here and there. So during the pandemic, mm-hmm. I got a job at at the uh, sorry at RBC. I applied mm-hmm. for one role, and then the recruiter is like, "We actually think you'll be better for this other role, which RBC, was which sorry, was better." For context, RBC is oh, a bank here in Canada. It's a bank, a yeah, really yeah, big yeah. bank, like yeah, one yeah. of the top. Like, so she was like, "We think you'll be better for this role." I'm like. Why not? Let's do it. So this is me. Sorry, what from role was that? It was um, a banking advisor. So okay. you're opening accounts for people. Um, you are selling some or helping with a little bit of investment purchasing here and there. Um, and really just for the most part, you're dealing with like the everyday clients. Like, I feel like I've said this before, but if you've lived different no, lives. For real, for real. Because I've gone from science students to, to finance girl. Like... <laughs> I love it. So many, so many things. So I have mm-hmm. to study for my, uh, what was the exam? But there's a, there's an exam you have to take in order for you to be able to sell, um, mutual funds. Oh, and so this is okay. me just studying and understanding like the financial system in Canada. And mm-hmm. It was, it was great though. Like knowledge wise, mm-hmm. I was like, Oh, this is something I didn't know before. So I'm adding it to my toolkit. I start working in the bank. It's great. It's wonderful. I'm so happy. Um, and then I, after a while, I was like, I, mean, I want to grow. I don't want, I, I don't want to be one of those people that are in the bank or for Wait, 10 yeah. years. I also do want to yeah. I'm like, yeah, no, that's, I know, that's, right. I'm yeah. like, I know I can grow. I know I can move. So I want to, I want to keep it going. So like maybe a year ish into the role, I started applying for other roles within the bank and I successfully got into like the business business so into the business advisor role so the, mm. this role i'm primarily helping businesses with credit while i'm doing all these many things by the way i started my adv's corner whatever it is okay i started off with youtube because like again <laughs> i started off with youtube because it was always a thing in my head of this is what i want to do mm-hmm. and I, i'm like okay, i want to learn how to use my camera so i remember i'd saved money when i was working retail yes. in ottawa okay. i bought my first camera do you remember what year that was that you started like content uh I bought the camera like 2016. I oh, did okay, not. It's been yeah, it's been a while. Okay. I did not start using it till like 2017, somewhere in 2017. Um, mm-hmm. And so, honestly, initially it was just how do I learn how to how do I use this camera manually? And then from there, from there, from there, that's how I kind of started taking pictures and like all oh, the pictures are great, wonderful. Yeah. And then I was really, I think I've been great. I've been comfortable with. Mm-hmm. Um, what you call it with photography and then i was like okay, with this video video is really where i want to go that's what i really want to learn mm-hmm. so it's been a journey just getting getting yeah. there we did we did we did we did we did um, thanks yeah i left the bank because something was just tugging yes, at me yeah. i think the same thing that i feel like was tugging at me while i was doing my chemical engineering of mm. there's just so much more that i want to do that i know that i can do and mm. if i don't give this in a shot I is I will regret it. I would never know how far I can go. So <clears throat> like that that is something that I always tell myself. Like I never want to leave this world wondering yes. what it would have been like if I had explored like, like an interest. So yeah, I took myself to school to go do broadcasting. And it covers film, television, radio, digital media, and I love it. I've made my first short film, and now I'm here, yes. producer, director. I need many, to many link things. that, like, in the description. Oh, so yes. it's gonna be like there's audio and video for this podcast, by mm-hmm. the way. So if you are listening to the audio, make sure you watch the video as well. But yeah, in the description, I'm gonna put links to Adri's like pages and yeah, everything. Um, mm-hmm. So what's the name of the film that you made? Oh, it's called Now or Never. Now or Never. It's a okay. romantic short. 
love it. So you guys need to check that out. I think it's on YouTube. It right? is. Yeah. It's on YouTube. Okay. Thank you so much for my very long story. <laughs> no. So you mentioned um, moving to Toronto. Did you have like any support when you moved? Was there ever a time when it was just like a bit overwhelming or scary or you know? Um, I mean. Yeah, again, I think I was just so bold back then. I don't, I have to give credit to God because honestly, for the most part, it was just like, God, God has my back. You know? mm. God really has my back. Um, but when I moved at the time, I didn't even know, I didn't know where I was going to stay. Like I didn't have an apartment. I did oh, not wow. have, I didn't have an apartment. I didn't have a job. So, but, but, <laughs> Wow. By the time I moved, um, I was coming to moving. See, no, for real. I, I, I was, um, I was coming to volunteer at the Toronto International Film Festival. Okay. Um, and you know, as a film girl, I was, uh, and that year, the, the, they were doing a spotlight on Lagos, hmm. Nigeria. So Interesting. that was the year wedding party came out. Wedding party oh, okay. part one. So there were, you know, a lot of like Nigerian filmmakers came here. Diti Bao, they came for the, for the premiere, all oh. of it. It was fabulous. It was the move after you came and saw or... No, me oh. yeah. <laughs> prior to the festival, I had come to Toronto like maybe twice for a job, okay. for a job interview. Oh, okay. Because I was like, I'm moving. It didn't matter. I was going to move anyway. So I'm no, like, okay, let me... Okay. I, I really started job hunting and I'm mm. like, okay, once I go for TIFF, I don't plan to come back. Because mm. um, like graduation was when like June, okay, so June, I just July. Realized what you had said was TIFF. I've actually been to a TIFF last year. Oh yeah. So a friend's sister was in a movie starring. Oh, movie. amazing, amazing, amazing. Uh, what movie was it? I did not come to you by chance. Oh, yeah, amazing. by Jackie. Yeah, it was imagine. so good. Amazing, yeah. amazing, amazing. I didn't Shout go last year. But, you know. <laughs> um, but yeah, Sorry. so I was like, I'm gonna come back. As in, that's how that is. That is my path. Oh, that my is God. how I plan to come I here. I love it. But, Another thing though with my mind, besides not having not not having short plans of where I was staying mm -hmm. um or having um a job or whatever, I, I had a friend here. She was in uni at the time. So I was like, Oh, I'll just stay with her for like maybe the first two, three days. And then oh, okay. Yeah. And, and then, then where did you stay? My mom my mom actually has a friend. I, okay. I call her like a friend sister because they they they've known each other for so long. Mm. But I think I'd not I had not asked her that I had not said I wanted to stay with her. I had not asked her or anything. Oh my god. In <laughs> in the number of days that I had arrived. But I, mean, I told her, Oh, I'm going to Toronto for tea for whatever. Mm -hmm. She was like, Oh, you have to come and visit me or whatever. It okay, is. fair so, enough. So there was that conversation. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So when I arrived and I stayed with my friend for like two days. I was like, oh, I'm going to visit my aunt. Mm -hmm. So when I told her, I was like, oh yeah, I'm here, blah, blah, blah. She was like, ah, you have to come and stay here. Oh. I said, okay, thank, thank you. you. <laughs> wow, I love it. Thank you so much. Well, like, it was just a thing of my mind. I was like, something is going to pan out. I don't know what it is. It was I was just going to ask, like, what was going through your mind through all of this? Like, zero panic. I love it. It's like, I don't know if there was zero <laughs> panic, but I think maybe the, 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 the faith, the, the, the belief that things were going to work was so much stronger. Shout out to my auntie. Thank you so much for this day. Thank you so much. But I was like, yeah, I, I need to bounce after a while. Mm -hmm. So my thing is, in my head, again, crazy faith. In my mind, I said, God, I just know. And I, I just I just had a feeling. I said, I think, I don't know if I think, I just knew. And it was a prayer as well that before TIFF is over, mm -hmm. I'm going to get a job. Like I mm -hmm. will have a job before TIFF is over. And like, Two days before TIFF was over, that was when I went for this interview at this bougie store that I was oh, very yes. not sure about, but I ended up loving. <laughs> um, <laughs> but I went, did the interview, mm. got the job before TIFF was over. Lovely. And my next thing was, I'm going to save a lot of money mm. and I can move and get my own apartment. That's what I did. But, but were there struggles? Um, they live in by myself part because I, I lived with my sisters in Ottawa. I, yeah. <laughs> I lived with my sisters in Ottawa. Mm -hmm. Uh, we had that was cheaper than Toronto I guess at the okay. time now we're in inflation times but <laughs> that time was way cheaper we lived in this four bedroom townhouse but in Toronto when, when I moved I moved by myself and I was living in the basement it's so quiet and I'm alone mm. and uh, mm. some days I can just I can hear this as in, it's so silent I can hear <laughs> if, if you should drop a pin yeah. I can hear it um, so it was just I, the loneliness was maybe the bit of struggle here and there. And I was not the kind of person that 
I think, I think to, to an extent till today, I'm not the kind of person that just goes out to make, like just goes into somebody's space to be their friend. Yeah. Um, so Same. major, major shout outs to my friends, Rima <laughs> and Sonu, those are my girls. Um, and I think in many ways, they were the, like, they just were like, hey, let's go out. <laughs> anyway, let's go do and this. this friends you met from work. Or, yeah, I met them oh, at work. work. Yeah, and we all kind of started like similar time too. Oh, nice. Then I think yeah, I just started it? building a community. like a community of friends. Yeah, yeah, that's really good. Honestly, I, I can relate to like a lot of parts of, of your experience. Um, mine is slightly different. Just a, a bit of my own, you know, mm-hmm. navigating, coming in, not really knowing anybody. Yeah. Um, I've spoken a bit about this on my YouTube channel already. But when I moved, I just had one person that I knew and she's she was a friend of my sister. Mm-hmm. So I got to stay with her like first three weeks. Um, so I was meant to stay in student accommodation, but mm-hmm. they were like, there's no space. You're on the waiting list. You have to wait. So yeah. literally um, days leading up to my moving, mm-hmm. I, I, like, I didn't have any accommodation as well. Um, but then she had said it would be fine to stay at her. So yeah. um, staying at her is just like a small family. So shout were, out to her. Uh, yeah, shout out to you, <laughs> Patricia. So there was other people that moved to... Canada as well, also staying at her. So oh, it was like wow. literally like a small family. And yeah. she also lived with her siblings. Um, so that was like the first three weeks. Mm-hmm. So it was kind of like a soft like introduction, soft landing. Mm-hmm. But you see, when I had to move to my side accommodation myself. by myself, <laughs> and like I'm not the type of person. Sorry. <coughs> We've been talking a lot, so um so <laughs> understandable. <laughs> but yeah, I'm not the type of person that needs people around like mm. even growing up as soon as i know like my family is somewhere around in some yeah, other okay. room i'm okay like okay. I just give me a good book or a good show mm-hmm. food i'm good. good you know so i i knew it would be a struggle but i didn't realize how like how bad it was like struggle. it was um i mean i did have classes every day so we're still going in person every mm. day um i didn't make two friends there were two nigerians that, that i was friends with and yeah. you know some other people in class i was also friends with but it was mostly yeah. like just like live Hi. conversation yeah. you know i mean i, I was close Closer to the Nigerians, um, but then you come back home and then it's just you. Yeah, like whatever it is you're going through, whether you're sick or whether you're like literally you have to you. figure yourself out. That's um, a lot. That's what time I fainted. Yeah. See, <gasps> it was actually very. You fainted. I think after living alone, I, I think I was like, yeah, I don't want to ever live alone again. Really? I always want to have a roommate. Yeah, oh, I was okay. cutting chicken. I don't know what I was thinking about. You know, where you get the chicken thigh, whatever it is, yeah. you can split it. And I, I, I don't know. I think my attention shifted for one second. And it came down on my thumb. Oh, my God. And in my head, I'm just like, oh, my God, that's so much blood. So I go and put my hand on under, like, the tap. And... I think I panicked. I'm sure, I'm, sure, I'm sure I had like a panic attack or whatever. I don't oh know. My God. But I'm so sorry. All I see is blood gushing. And next gushing. thing. Yeah. Because I'm like, let me put on my other the top. Because it was, it, was, it was a slightly deep cut. So I'm like, oh, let me put on my top too. Like in my mind, your thumb has like split in two. No, no not it's yet. Not like okay. it's, it, but it went deep though into my thumb. And, and you have to like pull it out. Pull out the knife. This is thing. Like it, it was a... <laughs> Like, you know, because I'm, I'm trying to cut the chicken. So it was, I'm like, oh my God. And I think prior to, I mean, when I was cutting chicken, I told my sister to call me. So oh, she said she was going to call me back. So I'm there trying to like rinse it off. And I say the next thing I remember is my phone vibrating on the floor because I had fainted. <laughs> so wild. I know. It wasn't oh, funny. I'm too upset. I went to buy, uh, what do you call it? Uh, what do you call it? Mm, first aid kit. It's like, this is the important thing you have in your house when you're living alone. My sister called me oh my and I was like, oh my God, I can't, I'm waking up and I'm like, I fainted. I didn't even know I fainted. I'm, I'm looking at my hand. I'm, like, I'm on the floor at this point and it's, my phone is vibrating and <sighs> I wake up and I'm just like, oh, I don't know how long I've been on the floor, but then I called 911 and they came in, they checked me. They're like, yeah, you're good. And oh my took God. my vitals. I'm like, please, I've never fainted in my life before. <laughs> this is as a, please. I would imagine. Imagine. So, I yeah, imagine. they came. After that, I got first aid. I got the first aid kit because I'm just like, in case, you know, I, mm. if, I had, if I had like gauze, if I had something, I, I wouldn't have panicked as much. Mm. But I was like, I've never seen this much blood. <laughs> come as a man. <laughs> come on. Okay. So yeah, it was, 
it's scary but yeah i can actually relate to that like now you're recounting your mm-hmm. experience i remember like same i was you know cooking cutting something it was oh like i ever remember what i was doing it, yeah. was, it was the most oh, silly <laughs> thing i was trying to eat sausages so i was trying to open the pack oh and I'm, instead of just reaching over to my uh-huh. you know drawer or whatever with um scissors yeah i'm like let me just use this knife and just hey, like you know hey. tear it upward mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. <laughs> Yeah, you guys want the rest of the story. I yeah, I literally just cut it, cut my uh, my thumb, and there was so much blood. I could see flesh, uh, like <laughs> it was so bad. <laughs> and immediately, I just called my parents. Like I called my dad or my mom. I, both of them were on the phone, and yeah. I was just like crying. I was oh, like, <laughs> and then what's wrong? What happened? Oh, Get us. Oh, oh, yeah. my heart. Yeah. So they were literally like coaching me on Dude. the phone on what to do, how to like. Prices, don't yeah. open, don't leave it like yeah. just put pressure and it was a lot i even went to the pharmacy after mm-hmm. um you know just for them to get it checked and like if i need any Anything, shots or anything. yeah and the guy is like oh like where is the other part because i'm like oh i caught my thumb <laughs> that was what i said when i got there you know when he does every other part i'm like what's he looking for <laughs> i said i was like wait the other part yeah said, yeah like where i said no it's to get the thumb is together it's together it's, it's together is the the cutting is inside, inside just like the deep cut yeah. so i was like still like tears in my eyes so i'm sure he was wondering like, what is this What's girl going on? Yeah. you know but i'm just like yeah if there was another part of my hand somewhere i would not be discomposed yeah, at all um but yeah living alone is, is definitely not easy and i actually still live alone mm-hmm. so you like you you've not lived alone since then no me yeah, i was like it's very important to have a roommate just yeah. the loneliness part of it the fact that like sometimes just it's so quiet yeah. um and then safety reasons as well if you're sick it's nice that somebody's there yeah, to care for you if there's a problem it's just yeah it just makes sense for me to have people around sense. and it cares about it hasn't always for the most part it hasn't been my siblings i only just started living with my siblings again recently so it's oh, been yes. other people. Okay. Well, my man has to say, I could do that. That would, that would. I would. <laughs> I just, I need to have somebody around. Yeah. So, yeah. No, that makes sense. Honestly, I feel like, so for me, I've lived alone since I moved to Canada. So I have lived alone for five years. Oh. And it has been a journey, like, from, you know, just, just feeling so much loneliness mm. to actually enjoying my alone time, enjoying my space. Yeah. Like now I, I often say that my space is like my, my sanctuary. Mm. Like it is so, it's kind of like precious to me. Like yeah. I don't just even be letting anyone in my, in my home. Like I that's how, you. that's how I guess attached I've been to my, my space. Mm. And honestly, I, I would also say another major reason that I've, you know, held out and not gotten a roommate, although I've seriously considered it mm-hmm. many times, like even at some point, my mom was like, I should not just get a roommate. Mm-hmm. Like it's just getting too much because uh-huh. I will call her sometimes and, you know, just be like, oh, it's just so, so lonely, lonely. and uh-huh. oh, I miss you. And yeah. yeah, so I consider getting a roommate, but just because of some horror roommate experiences Roommates. I've had in the past, I'm just like, nope, I will stick it out. And Honestly, I feel like at this point, my next roommate will be my husband. <laughs> and for you. So, <laughs> yeah. Um, so the reason for this entire, our entire story is just mm-hmm. to encourage anyone that, you know, might be going through that loneliness in a foreign country. It doesn't even yeah. have to be Canada. Like moving away from like the home you've known all your life cannot be easy. Uh. Um, but it gets better. And if, if you need to get a roommate, get a roommate. Like, um, but yeah, um, not even just roommates. Um, and maybe we'll get into it in some other questions. But mm-hmm. like putting yourself in spaces um, that encourage community um, is mm-hmm. is one very important hack. Like a lot so of people true. talk about. Oh, and I agree with it in that you need to put in effort to making friends. Like every people cannot always be the ones coming to you. Like you got go say hi too sometimes. <laughs> you know. Yes. Until I moved to Canada, I've never had to consciously like make friends like it has just happened like you don't even remember how like you you met most of your closest friends like that's yeah. same for like, that's you know my interesting case. now that we're now we're talking about this like mm-hmm. when i think about my uni days mm-hmm. um sometimes i think i just was never that person again that just i wasn't oh i didn't always go up to people like i was sociable yes but i didn't always go up to people to like oh come on be my friend and then be my life or whatever <laughs> at some point i was yeah. just like 
maybe this is just how I am and I am just going to be comfortable with it. I'm going to get used to it. Like I, I would say I knew people. And I had some friends, but I just was not that person that would go and stay in somebody's house or like, mm. I was not that person. Yeah. And so I, I used to think, oh, is there something wrong with me? Like, why am I not like that? Why am I not like other people that want to be? And I'm just like, you know how I comforted myself? I said, I'm an ego. <laughs> Egos fly alone. <laughs> They're not always the other people. So you know what? It is what it is. <laughs> Loneliness is not being yeah. And it you're not alone. I've always been the type of person that I've that has had different friends so i have like very different circles of of friends just because i typically get along with everyone People, like yeah. most times um so from from that to like like zero very, very almost nothing so almost nothing you know it, it wasn't easy and like as you said like i'm i never want to just like insert myself into Someone's circles or or whatever so it, it did take time but eventually after a lot of you know prayer and you know, even sometimes extending myself and like Idiri said, also in putting yourself in spaces where you get to meet new people. A big one for me was church. Oh, yeah. Um, I made a lot of good friends there. And I feel like another major thing was after my first year here, mm-hmm. friends I had from Nigeria started to move mm-hmm. to Toronto, mm-hmm. uh, around Toronto. So we got to hang out a lot. So my weekends were always like, either you know going somewhere with my friends or going to someone's house so it got better with time mm-hmm. and yeah so if you're struggling to meet new people like don't think that there's anything wrong with you or maybe your personality is all of a sudden rubbish i mean you have friends back home right Period. so yeah it would just it might take longer for you but it would eventually happen i would say pray about it too because yeah god sees and he hears Absolutely. so you're going to be okay don't give up yeah. tough time yeah. never lasts <laughs> <laughs> tough people do so tough you got it do. okay yeah Amazing. thank you so much for coming on it i you love, absolutely love this conversation i had a great time um where can my people find you okay i'll tell you this much don't worry about twitter okay all i do is retweet <laughs> basketball things mm-hmm. um but on instagram i am at Idiris underscore corner so e-d-i-r-i-s underscore corner um same thing for tiktok and youtube as well love it Idiris and, everywhere. yeah and to say that the links to her pages will be in the description yeah. um for youtube and also the podcast platforms would also have links there thank you so much for watching if you enjoyed this episode make sure you subscribe on youtube yes. give the video a thumbs up and drop a comment let us know what you like yes. what you did not like hopefully there's nothing <laughs> is that no. so that she can grow yes yes okay. yes sorry sir. i'm open to feedback <laughs> <laughs> give me the feedback Please. um but yeah thank you for listening thank you for watching and i will see you guys in my next one bye, <laughs> bye. <laughs>